Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Rowan and today I'm going to show you seven different ways you can pass secrets into your Azure function apps. This video is a little bit longer than the ones I usually like to make just because there's so much stuff in it. So you can go to the contents below and skip to the bit that you want to look at if you already know where to go. The methods I use in this video sort of lead on from one another and there's a couple of niche ones at the end which stand out a little bit separately. But if you want to know the one that I would recommend the most, I would go straight to number five. So I set up some demo code for this and this is what it is. Basically, we're going to take in a number and we're going to multiply it by a multiplier that we're going to read from our settings. This is already running in Azure as an application itself, but we're just going to run it locally to show you what it does for now. If I hit play at the top, we'll get our pop up telling us it's running. So we'll take the address in here. So we'll go to a new tab here. We'll paste this in. We'll do question mark number equals five and we'll hit enter. So we've got our multiplier number is five. Uh, and this is because our base multiplier is just going to be one. And this is what we're going to change when we're reading from different places to know that the setting we've got is what we expect it to be. So for the first thing on our list, we're going to look at local.settings.json. Now, this is specifically for local development, but it provides you a really easy way to have your local config. So if you've got anything that's, say, specific to you as a developer rather than your whole team, you can make sure that you've just got the settings you need in the right place. So what we're going to do is open this and we've already got some default stuff in here we're not going to worry about that for now we're going to add custom multiplier to and this is the setting that we're going to use throughout this demonstration for all of our different methods so we'll save that now we need to read the setting from the config so i'm going to go to here and i'm going to put in these two lines here now when the application is first run the builder goes and gets a load of settings from all kinds of different places and it puts them together into like this environment. So when we call get environment variable here, we can actually get it from our local.settings.json. It could get it from our Windows environment variables. It can get it from like built in stuff to the Azure platform that counts as environment variables. So for now, for us, for our settings, that's where it's going to be picking it up from. So I hit run at the top and hit refresh. And now multiplied number is two because the setting that we set was actually to itself. So now we can see this has been picked up locally. Now, for the second thing on our list, we're going to go over to the Azure portal. Now, I've already got the application running here in Azure. So we're going to look at how you can add environment variables to an Azure application directly. This is for if you haven't got a pipeline and you want to just configure these things and the variables live really close to the application itself. So in our function app, we're going to go on the left hand side down to settings and configuration. And here we've got application settings and it's got a load of values here by default, but we can click on new application setting and give it our name custom multiplier. And we're going to set the value to three this time and hit OK. And we'll save that and saving this will restart the application for us. So it picks up that setting. And now back on the overview, if we go to the URL and hit copy to clipboard and we'll go to a new tab, I'll we'll paste that in and we'll do slash API slash function one. We'll set the number to five again. And now we can see the number is 15 because the setting we set in Azure was three. So there's the second thing on our list. Now we're going to jump over to Azure DevOps. So I've already got a pipeline set up for this. Um, it's just a really basic pipeline that builds the application and pushes it to Azure. Next thing we're going to look at is using Azure DevOps variable groups. So we're going to go over to library on the left hand side here and we're in variable groups by default and we're going to make a new variable group and we'll just call it my settings, something easy. And for now, we're just going to add a new variable and we're going to call it DevOps multiplier. And let's set the value this time to four. And if you want, you can click on the lock over here and that will basically hide it. So it makes it secure. You can't read it or change it in plain text, I believe. But we'll leave it like that for now and we'll hit save. Now, if we go back over to our pipeline, this has got some default variables generated for us as part of this project. We're actually going to change these around a little bit and we're actually going to give them this format here. So we've got the name and value separately. And by doing that, actually, let's include the group now. We're going to put in group my settings at the top. And what that actually does is that lets us use anything in the variable group we've defined without having to specify the group. It's just sort of in here inherently now. So any variable in there we can use as if it was just declared at the top here. So if we go down to here, this is the one that deploys the application itself. And we're going to add a new input in at the bottom. And we're going to have app settings. So this is like any .NET setting you want to pass in, and it will basically put it through into the same kind of environment variables area that we talked about earlier. We're going to set custom multiplier equal to our DevOps multiplier. And if we save that, 
it will run it automatically for us. And now that the pipeline's finished, if we go back over here and refresh, now it's set it to 20 because our setting was 4. The next thing on our list, we're going to look at linking a key vault to Azure DevOps. We're going to start by actually going to Azure and creating a key vault. So if we go to our resource group and create, we'll select a key vault. All we're going to do is give it a name, really basic one, and set our location. And we're just going to leave everything else default. So we've got a pretty standard key vault here and we'll hit create. And now it's deployed. We'll go to our key vault and we'll go to secrets and we're going to go and generate import. We'll call it custom multiplier and we're going to set it to five. And now we're literally just going to hit create. So now if we go back over to Azure DevOps and we go to our library, when we click on add in a variable group, we have the option here to link secrets from a key vault. So this basically lets you use any secrets in a key vault directly in your pipeline, kind of how we used the other group. This is really cool because you can have your, your key vault and your pipeline separately, but you can just sort of not have to worry about the fact they're separate. You can just treat it as if anything you put in your key vault is directly available for you in the YAML file. There is one quick thing we need to do before we set this up though. We just leave this quickly and we actually want to go to project settings. We want to go down to service connections and we're going to create a new service connection. And this is basically setting up a connection between our Azure DevOps and Azure to give the permission to access the key vault. So we're going to go to Azure Resource Manager and we're going to have a service principle automatic. We're going to let it generate the thing that's going to basically hold our permissions for us. We'll do it at the subscription level. We'll set it to my Visual Studio subscription the resource group. We'll give it a name. This is just what it shows up like on here. So let's just call it functions test. And we're going to grant access to permission to all pipelines and save that. And now that's added, we can go back to our library. We'll get rid of this variable group. And let's add a new variable group. And this time we're going to click on the link secrets bit. Now we'll give it a name quickly. We'll call it my settings. And this means that we won't have to change our YAML because it's already looking for something called my settings. Now in the subscription bit, we could use a subscription directly, but this is why we set up the service principle. And this way we don't have to have a user base subscription authorized to connect the two between each other. We want something not tied to a person. We select the key vault name, the only one it's going to give us, and we need to hit authorize on this. And now we're going to hit add on variables. And this is the one that it's found from the key vault. So if we tick that and hit okay, and that is now set up there. So we can save this. And because we actually call it custom multiplier in our key vault, we have to change the setting it's trying to find here as well. So it's not DevOps multiplier anymore, it's custom multiplier. So we'll run that and we'll just wait for that to finish. Hit refresh. And there we go. Multiplied number is 25. It's now picked up our new setting. And you'll notice that this has actually taken priority over the setting we set earlier in Azure um, on the app itself. Now we're going to go back over to DevOps and we're going to go to our library. We're going to set up what I believe is the best way to do this. We're still going to use a connection between Azure DevOps and our key vault, but we're not going to do it through this linked variable group. So I'm actually going to delete this and we're going to go to our pipeline. We're going to go down to our deployment function here and in the steps, add a new line. And now over here on the side, we're going to type in key vault. And we're actually going to add a key vault connection as a step in the pipeline. So here you've got the benefits of having that direct link to the key vault, to make it sort of seamless, but you've actually got it monitored and, and controlled in your YAML file, which gets checked into source control. This is kind of important, really, because it means you have the visibility over how your pipeline is getting its settings. So we're going to select our subscription and we're going to reuse our service connection functions test. We're going to use the same key vault and nothing else needs to change here because it will connect it in the exact same way. So once again, we can just hit save. Oh, one thing I did miss out because I removed the variable group from our library. It now can't find it. So what we need to do is remove it from the pipeline. And we just need to remove this from the top here. And there we go. Now that's passed. We can go back over to our tab and hit refresh. And multiplier is 25. It shouldn't have actually changed from last time. But it's good that it's still showing 25 and, and hasn't broken. For our next couple, we're actually going to jump back over to Visual Studio. Now this next one is actually one of the more niche ones. And we're going to inject the key vault by adding it to the builder when the application is first run. You might be used to something similar to this if you've ever added like any services to another type of .NET application, might have even been the key vault itself. It's done slightly different in Azure Functions to other types of .NET application, so we're going to take a look at how that works. The downside to this approach is you still need to pass in some kind of connection details most of the time to the application in order to tell it how to connect to the key vault. 
but there are definitely use cases for this. I've had them myself in the past due to certain business restrictions where you might want to keep, let's say, the connection details and the key vault separate from each other in really specific ways. And you might want to manage how the settings are used in a more controlled, refined way. So let's look at how we do this. So we're going to go over here and we're actually going to create a custom startup sort of class. We'll just call it startup so it matches uh, the rest of the code that's going to go into it. I'm actually just going to replace this with some code I've already put together. And I'll have a link to this in the description below so you can check out all the code. Let's get rid of this bit at the top, tidy that up a bit. And there are actually a few NuGet packages we're going to need to download to get this all to work. So in the NuGet package manager, we're going to go to browse and we're going to look for microsoft.azure.functions.extensions and we'll install that. We're going to look for azure.extensions.aspnetcore.configuration.secrets and we'll install that. Finally, we just want azure.identity. So we'll go back to our startup class and all of our issues have now gone away. So our custom startup is inheriting from this functions startup and we're going to override some of the methods. Now it forces you to override the configure one. We're not going to do anything with that for now. This is touching the builder part of it. We're going to override this function configure app configuration. This controls the configuration builder part of it. We're going to start by basically building the default configuration. And this is the part, um, like we mentioned a couple of times before, where it gets all of your current configuration from different places. So the local.settings.json, your environment, just sort of everywhere. And it, it puts all that together into one readable config. So we need to do that because in the next part, we actually have to specify the credentials we want to use. And I've actually specified the key vault endpoint as well. This is because we need to create some kind of way to talk to the key vault. And we're doing this using this here, client secret credential. There are actually a couple of ways you can set up credentials to talk to your key vault. You can use a default Azure credential or a token credential. Those are sort of two base classes and they both have a load of different types of credential you can create from them to connect. So one of them, for instance, is called something like a Visual Studio credential and it will actually use your logged in Visual Studio user all their permissions to the key vault. In this case, we're gonna go really simple and use client secret credential, and we're gonna manually enter our tenant ID, client ID, and client secret. And we'll set those up in a second. And this is what's going to give us our authorization. And like I mentioned before, we still have to pass these in from somewhere. So in this case, I'll set them in local.settings.json. And then at the end, you get your configuration builder and you add your Azure key vault. And this basically sets the key vault itself as an extra source of information similar to our local.settings.json or environment or whatever, this adds it as another one of those type of sources. And then we call build on it to make sure everything runs and put it all together. Now, in order to get that information to actually connect to the key vault, we need to set up a service principle. So we'll go to Azure Active Directory. I'm going to go to App Registrations and hit New Registration. Um, we'll just give it a quick name. Everything else looks fine. So we're just going to hit Register on that. Now we need to copy the application client ID the directory tenant ID. And we also need to go over to certificates and secrets and do a new client secret. And we'll call this one VS test for now. And this we need to take the value from. Now we've got the details to connect. We also actually have to grant permission to the key vault. Um, and basically we have to add this app registration here as one of the users that has permission to use it. So if we go over to our key vault and we're gonna go to access policies and we're gonna hit create and we need get and list in order to read our, from our key vault. We're going to go to the principal and we're going to select RL functions test that we just created and we'll just create that. And now that's added those permissions in there. And now we go back over to Visual Studio and we're going to go to our local.settings.json. I'm going to paste in these. Now these values are actually from when I was testing it out before. So we're going to have to change these a little bit. So from before we've got client ID, we've got our tenant ID, which is actually going to be the same, our secret, and the key vault URI itself is also changed. So we'll just put the new one in there. And that's everything we need set up there. Well, we've got our credential set up here. Actually, we have to replace the default Azure credential in here. Now that we set up our startup class properly, we have to actually go and call it and use it in the right way. So now we've added our key vault here. It won't actually appear in the environment variables. I'm not entirely sure why it does that. What we need to do is we need to add a constructor for our class. So I'm going to paste one in here that I made before. And we need to remove static from these. And 
this is basically going to inject an I configuration, which is what we can read from. So now that we've set it up here, we can change it and add it in here. So instead of having the environment line here, we're going to put in from config equals con underscore configuration custom multiplier. So that's what we're looking. And now we're going to replace R from settings from our config because that's where we're getting it from now. So now we can hit run on that. Now if we go back over to our tab because it's running in the same place, I actually had a problem before and it didn't pick it up and set it at zero. But this will demonstrate when it changes that it actually has picked it up now. So if we refresh that, and now we're getting 25 because it is successfully connected to our key vault from the code running locally. And now for the last method on our list. This is something, again, I wouldn't really recommend unless you've got a really specific reason why you want to use it. But this is using an object called a secret client. We're going to basically set up a direct object we can access the key vault with in our code. And so you can really use this in pretty much any C-sharp application you might have. Now, similar to the last method, we're going to need to pass in the values that we use to set up the connection between our code and the key vault. So we're actually just going to go and take them from the startup. We'll replace this line here with that. And that obviously doesn't exist. So we're going to need to go and change this. But it's going to read it from the configuration. Now, you shouldn't do the injection thing with this, which is where we're sort of getting this stuff from, but that's just to make it easier. In reality, you probably want to be reading these from similarly, the local.settings.json, your environment. You might want to pass this information down from your pipeline itself. We're actually going to take the credential setup itself as well, and we'll have that down here. And now we're going to paste in the line that sets up our secret client. So we've got a client, it's got our URI, the endpoint and it's got the credential we set up and finally to access the variable we want we're going to paste in key vault secret and we're going to do client.get secret custom multiplier and then our try pass is literally going to be secret dot value and if i hit play on that again we're going back to the browser again and really at this point we're just hoping that a refresh still gives us 25 because that's still our multiplier and there we go it passed so there we go seven different ways you can pass secrets to your azure function app some of them more common, some of them a bit niche and weird and might not really fit your use case. But at least I tried to cover everything here. So hopefully you found some use from this video and most likely you're probably going to go away and just use one of these. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video, if, especially if you watch all the way through, seeing as it might probably wouldn't have been relevant to you all the way. Thank you very much for watching.